which means uh, water can support a boat. It can also flip a boat. And that's to reflect the mentality because the, Ch the Qing dynasty in China was a Manchurian dynasty, meaning the, Chinese, the people on top were not Chinese. And so they've always been quite, I guess, insecure. And they need to kind of strengthen their legitimacy. And, and also, they need, they need to be kind to the Chinese, but at the same time, they need to make sure that the Chinese never overtake them. Because they know in the Mongol dynasty, the Yuan dynasty, when Genghis you know, uh, Kublai Khan, not Genghis Khan, Kublai Khan came and defeated China, their dynasty lasted only uh, over 70 years. And so the Qing, the Manchurians, saw that and they're like, uh, okay, so the uh, Mongolians lasted 70 years. Why? The Mongolians, they crushed the Chinese. They, you know, they had a very clear hierarchy system. And it was what? The ratio of population was 100 Chinese to one Mongolian. I don't care how good, how strong that Mongolian is on horseback, right? If you go to China and you, under, you undergo, most cultures when they go into China, they undergo a process called sinicization. Right, sign, uh, sinization. Um, you guys, did I tell you guys what sign? What does sino mean? Anybody know? Sino? No idea. Yeah. Um, China in Latin is called Sina. Right. If you anglicize that, it turns into China. But. It sounds weird to say Chinaization, right? Doesn't it? So uh, when you, when most of the times when people talk about the uh, Chinese, they, uh, like for example, Sino-Japanese War, Sino something War, Sino whatever, uh, Sino means Chinese, because at the, the root of the word is in Latin, it's in Latin, it's Sina, and so Sinoization is uh, the basically ch turning Chinese. And so the Mongolians were in China, they, and they were, they were either, you know, either crushing the Chinese and the Chinese constantly rebelled, or um, they underwent Sinicization, which means they, turned, they slowly turned Chinese, and they realized that, okay, we're Mongolians, we can't, we can't be Chinese, but at the same time, they're kind of forced to turn Chinese. And so the Mongolian dynasty lasted only 70 years. The Manchurians were well aware of that, so they created a system where they said uh, Manchurians, Manhan, uh, I know what is in Chinese, Manhan, Yijia, which means the Manchurians and Han Chinese are one family. And that's the whole mentality. And over time, over a couple hundred years, the Manchurians essentially turned Chinese as well. And if you look at, you know, Manchuria today, there is no Manchuria on the map. Why? United. It's part of China, yeah. Yeah, it essentially in integrated itself into China. And, uh, and you're right, Mukden is a part of Manchuria, but by then it was part of China. So this boat symbolized that the water, meaning the people, is, uh, can support the nation, it can also flip the nation over, but when you have a marble boat in the ocean, uh, in, the, in the lake there, it basically means that no matter how strong the waters are, the boat's never going to flip, which, which also symbolized the, the idea that the Manchurians are going to stay on top forever. The Manchurian dynasty is going to last forever. Of course, Manchurian dynasty did not last much longer, you know, did not last, you know, 50 years past this. Um, but that's the whole idea. Now, when you build a marble boat and you spend such a lot, so much money, I'm not saying the marble boat, like, basically messed up the sound drive, there's no word. I'm, I'm not saying that, but the whole Summer Palace project did. Uh, what you essentially have is, um, where did the money come from? The Chinese government by then was already going becoming bankrupt, and Qi Shi, the empress, who did not see value in uh, modernization, she essentially took a lot of the money that was supposed to go into modernization um, and put it into the, the funding for the military. And that's what they took the funding for the military for the palace, and so essentially. People in the military who need to report and say, okay, I've got, here's some military equipment that we uh, recently got. Uh, they basically, for barrels that they have to fill in with gunpowder, 
they filled it with cement or sand. And so when the when the war was happening, the Japanese war, they weren't aware of it, right? You know, imagine you're in the middle of war. It's like, okay, load the can of, uh, like load load the, load the gunpowder. You know, like just like Pirates of the Caribbean, you load the gunpowder on, and then you light it, and then you bam, you shoot it, right? Well, they open the gunpowder box, and it's cement. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then they just wait to get shot. Uh, the training was poor. Chinese officers were not trained. You had Western officers trained. And you'll see that later on in the pictures. But the Western officers, um, because they hired, you know, British officers to come and tr uh, train their people. But at the same time, when you have a British officer, what's the problem? They're going to go on the British side? Communication. I think uh, the communication is very important. If you Imagine a captain tell giving orders and nobody understands what he's saying. Body so language. <laughs> steer left, port side. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I'm just going to steer. <laughs> go forward. <laughs> you know. and, and so that was one of the problems, uh, communication. Another one is, Training, they did, the, the people were poorly trained. The last training that they had before the Sino-Japanese War broke out was around three months ago. And uh, another another big thing that happened was uh, the, they right before the Sino-Japanese War, um, about a couple months before that, they, uh, they, they also just painted the boats, repainted the boats. What happens when you paint a boat? No, not really. What happens when you paint the boat and just you know, just touch it up and make sure everything's nice? You coat it with all this nice stuff. Uh, it's time passes. Rot, rot, rot. No, 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 it doesn't rot. It's time passes, but it's gonna. No, no, no. A couple of months ago, it's pretty new, really new actually. Sorry. No. When you paint your boat and when you you know, coat it with all the this nice stuff, um, what it does is essentially all that stuff is flammable. It's flammable. So when the Sino-Japanese War broke up, the Japanese took out the cannons, bam, bam, okay, hit the Chinese boat, and then Fire. fireworks. <laughs> the Chinese boat explodes by itself because <laughs> it's just so flammable. And imagine, you know, even if it hits hits one part of the boat, the fire will spread really quickly to the the armory, and then there's gunpowder in the armory, and that explodes, and that whole that whole boat is you know GG, it's game over. And so, the Jap on the other hand, the Japanese were well trained. The Japanese had Japanese um, officers, and they had the most modern boats. They built it themselves, and so uh, the Japanese beat, were able to beat China really quickly. They became a world power, and they were um, the and and they were the first um, first uh, non-European country to defeat China. They claimed an empire in Korea, and it also led to kind of a momentum in which they realized that strong expansionism with a strong military is very effective. Right? And remember, the focus of this lesson is how did the Sino Japanese War and the Russo Japanese War lead Japan down the road to war in World War II? And with success, you think it's a good thing, and you want to keep doing the same thing, right? Um, yesterday, I was in an education meeting where you, teachers sit down and they talk about education and all that fun stuff. Um, one of the things that we talked about is um, self-efficacy. Self-efficacy. What do, does anybody know what that means? Efficacy. Learning by yourself. Realizing. Efficacy. Efficiency. How well you can control yourself? No, it's more of a process of a self actualized self actualization. So you you realize you just you. I mistake by yourself. No, you realize your self worth. You realize your self worth. No and so one of the main one of the main. Uh, things that, the, that affects your self-efficacy is success. When you're successful at doing something, you want to keep doing it. Motivation. Right? So for example, you know, I play basketball with David sometimes, and, and, he, and one, one night I played with him, he, 
he had a mama's kim kimbap it, for kim dinner. Yeah, it, well, his mom made kimbap for him, and so he's like, "Oh, I'm so full," and he went to play basketball. And then that night, I think he 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 might have been the top scorer because he just kept on shooting three ball, three ball after three ball after three ball, and he kept on hitting. So the second, <laughs> so the second time he came, which was uh, two weeks ago. He shot a bunch of three balls as well. He first, yeah, at first he be, he began with missing them, but in the second half of the of that night, he hit a lot of he hit a lot of balls. And in fact, you know, we, we I was on the same team team as him, and we were in a game that we should we had no business in being in. They had three varsity players on their team, and then for us it was like me, you, and what? Mm -hmm. Peter, Peter, Peter Shen. Yeah, Peter Shen. Yeah, it was a, it was so it was us three, and we had no business in being in the game. They could have destroyed us, but. You know, his three balls kept us going, and it's, so it's kind of like his success in basketball has always been in shooting. So what does he do? Keep shooting, right? And same thing, if you're good at doing something, it makes you feel good, and you want to keep doing it. That's typically what drives us to go a certain way. Motivation. It's motivation, <coughs> that's right. And so um, expansionism of a strong military, the Japanese realize, hey, Modernizing is a good thing. Westernizing is a good thing. Let's keep doing it. And let's keep adopting these aggressive foreign policies. And so that led to the rise of a military government in which generals and admirals could, be, uh, could rise in the ranks of Japan. Now, think about it. When, and I think I told you this last class, when a country is militant, meaning that there's a lot of military people in the government. If the country fights a lot of wars, who would the top officers in that country usually be? Generals. Generals, right. People who fight wars because they've accomplished lots of things and so the top ranks are all covered with generals. And if generals are on top, then what are most likely the foreign, the policies of that country in the future? Yeah, aggressive war. Like you know, they can, they think that yeah, um, we climb the ranks through war. We can cut, keep fighting wars because we've been successful, and that starts kind of a trend. And Jap the Japanese already had bushido as their uh, mental as their spiritual background. And what you think, like bushido? What is bushido again? Samurai. Spirit. Yeah, samurai spirit, musado, right? In Korean, it's musado. And so the, the Japanese already had that. They're really quite militant to begin with. Plus the fact that they take into the fact that they think that their emperor is a god. What is, how does that affect your mentality if your emperor is a god? You're not immortal. But number one, gods don't lose. Right? So we won't lose. What else? A very strong sense of nationalism with a, you're better than everybody in the world, right? There's a very strong sense of nationalism. And add the fact that you think your emperor is God and God should rule the world and therefore Japan should rule the world. Well, should, rule, should rule the world. And that's kind of how the mentality is built up. <coughs> so the military government is there. Uh, expansion is a strong military there. And they, they signed the Treaty of Shimonoseki. And um, be mature. <laughs> Right. Yes, I know it's it, it's a very interesting uh, word for Koreans. What does it mean? Shimonoseki, Shimonoseki is actually a, a a place in Japan. It's signed there. In um, in uh, Chinese, it's called the uh, Maguan, uh, Maguan Taoyao, which is uh, Maguan is the place where in in the Han Job, the place is called Maguan. Horse means horse gate, yeah. literally, and that's what it is in Shimonoseki. And so it's a it's a place in Japan. It's still there today. Shimonoseki. What does this You're supposed to do a reading, and it'll be very long, oh. so don't worry about it. So the first Sino-Japanese War was fought like that, and so I'm going to show you some pictures. Uh, here's a picture. What's happening in this picture? Chinese, United Kingdom, Germany, Austria. China. Who's who's the United Kingdom? Left. Okay, yeah, here's the Queen. Queen. Okay. Russia, the pointy. Russia with the pointy hat. Yep. Japan. Austria. Japan's over here. Where? Who's this? Austria. Russia. Okay. Russia. Austria. It's Russia. Russia. It's more Russia. Russia. Okay. And who is this? France. France. That's right. And uh, what's what are they doing? They're dividing.